Are you looking for a podcast about getting down with the shrimp sickness? Then you must be thinking of another podcast. <laughs> Whoa, oh, 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 oh. Good evening, Kelsey. Good evening, Robert. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? <laughs> I'm okay. I just have things. Uh-huh. Can I ask you a question real quick? Ask me a question. Because I got I got a little confused on some stuff today. I wanna I wanna like reach out for some more opinions. Alright, let's get some opinions. <clears throat> let's clear the air. <laughs> um, so if this doesn't give us the the tone of the episode <laughs> I feel like, you know, nothing else is going to measure up. So okay. if you're like, like right off the bat, might just sit this whole show out. Okay. Okay. Kelsey. Robert. <clears throat> what is anti-Semitism? Oh, sh- what? Robert. <laughs> yeah. I what, mean, what, what is the, de- what is it? What is the definition a, of it? A textbook definition of it? Yeah. I mean, it's just like anti-Jewish folk. Okay. It's like language and rhetoric and discrimination against people of the Jewish faith. Okay. So I sent you a TikTok earlier. Yes. About you did. a guy who was making fun of being like a far left person in the US or something, right? Yes. And so he was talking about how he wakes up in his lizard skin and <laughs> then he puts on his human skin because this is what right-wing people think he does all day right uh-huh. and then he tells bill gates thanks for chipping all the people with with with, with the vaccine and all this stuff right and then he right. goes into outer space and shoots lasers at california and all this shit right right and then he takes off his Standard human skin things. goes back to bed in his lizard skin life is happy another successful day amen <clears throat> so those comments said how could you put every single anti-semitic trope in one tiktok Hold on. <laughs> this is why I'm asking you. Because uh, in your words and my words, anti-Semitism is anti-Jewish. Correct? Yeah. Let me, like, look it up and make sure. I'm, yeah, okay. Hostility to our prejudice against Jewish people. Yes. So tell me what lizard skin has to do with being against Jewish people. You know what? I think I've heard this before, actually. Let me do a quick Google. But I Because feel I like... did find something. Okay. That like half tied it together and it was very I think, loose. I think that there's like some crazy yes. conspiracy theory out there that it's like Jewish people are lizards or something. Like Okay, I found a guy who said anybody that like followed the government and did that stuff was a lizard person. And uh-huh. that and that the guy that came up with the theory was anti Semitic. So, okay. is it just anti-Semitic by proxy? Oh, boy, howdy. Because um, that's like saying Cthulhu is racist because the guy that wrote him was racist. Right. He, so... Do you know what I there, mean? Yeah. So, there's a QAnon theory, just doing a quick Google here, that um, there's secret society of underground lizard people yeah. secretly control the world. Isn't that... But how is that uh, anti-Jewish? Because... Well, are you saying that they're they saying that like Jewish? the Jewish people are the lizards? <laughs> but I never saw him specifically say that. I think it's just one of those um, theories. Wow, hold on. Okay, now I've hit. Now I've hit onto it here. David Ica, is that who you looked yes. at? Yes, yes. Okay, him. yeah. Um, because so he said that himself. it goes back to the Illuminati, and the Illuminati is very much not Jewish. I thought the Illuminati was, like, the top, like, Christian thing. Hmm. Right? Uh, I don't think the Illuminati is religious at all, is it? I don't know. I always Boy, howdy, this took is it to kind of be. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, according to this uh, conspiracy theorist. Okay. I don't know. Jewish people are lizards. I fucking, I don't okay. know. <laughs> I did not know that, that that whole conspiracy theory was based around <laughs> Jewish people. Me either, actually. Like, I really thought that it was just, like, kind of how, like, the birds don't exist. They work for the bourgeoisie. The birds are cameras. Yeah. Like, I just thought it was one of those things. I mean, it kind of is. Yeah, but, like, but now it's directly targeted towards a group of people. 
Yeah. Which I didn't think was the point of that conspiracy theory. No. Yeah. Uh, so Jewish people. Bill Gates is not Jewish, is he? Wow, this is I have no idea. I don't exactly. think like, so. Like Bill they Gates, said, like Jewish? everything in the TikTok was anti-Semitic, and that it was like every single anti-Semitic thing that is like out there in the world right now. Okay. And I was uh, like, I'm not gosh, gathering that from. Maybe this. I'm just not tapped into that like specific vein of culture to know. You know. I guess. Yeah. I uh, mean, Bill Gates is not Jewish. I didn't think so. So what about him? Chipping all the people with the COVID vaccine is anti-Semitic. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think maybe that... Uh, like, I wonder if people started the TikTok, did got mad. Finish it? Yeah, and were just like, oh, so anti-Semitic. And then it just blew up from there. Yeah, who knows? I mean, TikTok and, to be fair, like, most facets of the internet are so quick to judge. Like, yeah, you take it from the top, like, 30 seconds or something, and you're like... This is the judgment I have made, and I am done with this piece of media now. Yeah. So, yeah, that was a good opener for you, I guess. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm ready to crack this thing open. <laughs> yeah, sure. please. I'm, I'm, I'm very ready. Hell yeah. Okay. Ooh, wow. Like, m- mist and steam is coming out of it. It's so Ooh, pretty. Fresh right one. So I brought you a topic. Yes. Because it... It started from, like, the tiniest thing, and then it's, like, between last night and today, it's just so much evidence has piled up around it. Like, it's just this thing that's going around right now. Yeah. And there was just so much of it that I was like, well, we could go deep into something like that. And then I didn't think we were going to be doing it the same day that I proposed the idea. (laughs) We haven't had, like, a go-deep talk- topic in a while, so I was kind of, like, thirsting for it, you know? Well, this is not typically the kind of thing I get into, because you could say this is, like, borderline political stuff. Yeah. Political correctness. I mean, not really borderline. It's in the name, you know? Yeah. So, I know that political correctness has been a thing for a while. Right. But it seems like it's becoming much... It's coming more to a head, and it's becoming less about political correctness as just, like, the whole, like, not offending people thing. You can't do anything that would remotely offend one person. So I think the thing that brought this to a head is obviously, like, having a white supremacist as a president for the last four years. It's been a little bit of a mess here in America. Yeah. And I think that so many people are thirsting to get out of that shit. Kind of, yeah. So it's it's been like a constant tug of war between like the liberal snowflakes who need to have their safe spaces and people that just want to have like, I don't know. See, that's so, funny so, that you said that because I watched a TikTok and these liberal people were calling like right wing people the snowflakes because they, they are the ones that get upset because they don't want to wear masks and all that stuff. So yeah. I think I, I think they were, like, trying to, like, flip it back around on him, I guess. A little bit of snowflake in all of us, isn't there? Or something? I guess so. Um, I think, yeah, it's just, it's really come to a head in America because of, like, the political events of the last four years, and especially the last year in and of itself has been just a kind of horrible roller coaster that we can't get <laughs> off of. So yeah. So I think it's it's really just a matter of, like, society is now kind of picking itself apart and being, like, what can we get rid of in the vernacular like what what do we say still that doesn't need to have a place in society anymore does that make sense yeah yeah so i want to tell you what even started the whole thing okay uh it was twilight okay (laughs) um (laughs) and again tiktok all right so taylor comes home and she's all like god i don't understand she was like TikTok is all about Twilight today. <laughs> and I was like, why? Is it like an anniversary or something? And she's like, no, everyone's mad at one of the characters. And I was like, okay, what for? Is it at the werewolf man for wanting to fuck a baby or something? No, but that should that's... be high on the list. <laughs> that's that all I the, know about Twilight. It was the weirdest thing to me. No, everybody was trying to get him to put his shirt on. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> so... One of the uh, the main heroes 
in the book. So he's on the good side, right? Okay. There's a character named Jasper. Now, I have seen the first movie twice and all the rest of them once. So I don't really know everybody like 100%, you know? Yeah, I'm I'm going to level with you. I know nothing about Twilight, obviously. Like, okay. Well, I, I know nothing. Well, what you need to know is that this guy is one of the heroes. So he's on like our side. He's on... You know, the light side of the force, right? Okay. And everybody's really mad because in his backstory, he served in the Confederacy Army. It's problematic. And so everybody was like, well, why couldn't she just have written him to be on the other side? Like, why couldn't she have just written it that way? And that makes zero sense to me. Um, so are there like, are there specific plot lines or something within twilight where we nope. so why do we know or why do we have to know that he was in the confederacy i mean he was talking about when he got turned into a vampire is like the premise of when he's of like <laughs> on the battlefield when it finds out pretty much what the fuck so basically he was he was he was a young boy in texas okay during during the civil war so he was a on good the, old boy so like he was in the confederacy and I mean, there's, like, a bit more to it, but he winds up getting turned into a vampire, right? Okay. But so, I was like, well, what about it, though? Like, what about him having served there? Yeah. I understand that you don't want him to, because that is, you know, like, the wrong side of history, right? Absolutely. Nobody likes Confederate soldier. Yeah, but it is a narrative. It is a story and are we saying that no character can ever have a bad past? So because yeah, I mean he was on the wrong side and he has like a redemption arc where he's struggling to fight against all the wrongs that he ever saw and was part of when he was like a normal person. Okay, so he has some like redemption in himself. It's not like he's just brooding in the back of Twilight like I know. cursing the blacks the whole time or something, right? It's like Well, it never had anything to do with that cuz actually while he's serving in the Confederacy, He's freeing people the whole time, trying to get them out so that they don't get caught in this crossfire. Like, he's constantly working against them, but he served in that part, so everyone's mad. So what are people mad about? Because he was in the Confederacy. So the, what the simple fuck fact, <laughs> The simple fact is he was in the Confederacy. Why could she not have written him into the Union? So this fictional character yes, works fictional? on the side no, of the no, Confederacy. No, 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 no. This fictional vampire character... <laughs> fictional vampire character was on the side of the confederacy helping the union uh -huh. and people are angry with him because he's getting a redemption arc i'm not following exactly that's my whole issue with this topic is that okay. the simple fact that that there's something there that is bad the whole thing is bad when you don't look so people at people are saying thing. like throw out the whole series now we don't like twilight anymore because jasper was on the confederacy i kind of think that's happening yeah what the fuck? Because, because Taylor was like, just let me have something. I already can't like Harry Potter. Oh, God. You know? I mean, yeah. So, so not liking Harry Potter, that's more, that's more of a thing. I, we've, we've talked about J.K. Rowling before on this show and well, yeah. her whole situation of being uh, the worst person ever. But I'm still like, maybe not like her, but the work speaks different than her. Does it though? In some, I mean, I know that there are you know, points of her in it. The fact that the only Asian character in the entire series is, is named Cho, Cho Chang. Chang. Yeah. She's a s submissive female. Yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of problems with, well, yeah. with Harry Potter, but we don't have to dissect that. I this. mean, I mean, I'm not a Twilight fan to begin with, but I feel like I have to stand up for this one argument because yeah, I don't this understand. Is a, this is a weird stance to take. Like if there's more problems within Twilight, if we find out that whoever authored Twilight was also fighting on the Confederacy and still believes <laughs> in the Confederacy, first of all, yeah. congratulations on being the oldest person alive. And second of all, that sucks. But so, yeah, that was the whole thing that started this. And we were okay. like, whoa. I was like, what is, what is happening? Because to me, yeah. I, I had told Taylor when I was in my script writing class, Right. Uh huh. We all had to like write a little treatment, do like a character, just talk about them, and a and just like an opening situation that they were in. And the teacher lady reads it, and she was like, "These all suck." Oh, okay. <laughs> she was like, 
all of your characters are perfect people. Nobody has a scar. Nobody has ever had anything bad happen to them in life. They're all just, like, well and good. Nobody was a Confederate soldier. Nobody cares. Like, who's going to care about a character that has no struggle? Right. Like, he was in a bad part of, of time, and he's working to be better than that. I feel like that's a good thing. But then I also laid it to Taylor. It's like, okay, fine. It's what? 18, what, 40 or something, right? Right. I live in Texas. I'm being told that, you know, there's a war coming. Let's say I'm like a poor farmhand. I'm just going to magically be able to leave and work my way all the way from Texas to the Union and hopefully not die on the way. Right. Like there's there's I no... I probably would have stayed. There's really no option. And I think if you were of age, you were probably drafted, right? I think so. Yeah, so... Like, saying that he served in it doesn't mean he chose to be there. Right. The fact is, he served, but they don't like that. And okay, I think that's... that's a very, just, like, quick, knee-jerk reaction. Yeah, so I this... We should get into the topic at large, perhaps. So, <laughs> <laughs> to, like, to sum up this topic, I guess, we're trying to draw a line between being woke and performative wokeness, right? It's kind of like the idea of inclusiveness, being inclusive to all things. Yeah. How woke is too woke, essentially? <laughs> uh, so do you want me to continue on me and Taylor's Confederacy rant? I mean, or would you like to move into the go? wokeness? <laughs> well, we went on like a bit further. So, you know, we were talking about that and how we were like, you know, what are you going to do? And she's like, I feel like it's different to pick on this. Versus saying, we need to ban the Confederacy flag. Oh, yeah. And I was like, well, yeah. And then she brought up, uh, there's people, she read some article that she was like, yeah, there's like towns in the South with like statues of people up in them, right? Right. There's there's still states that have the Confederate flag in their state flag. Yeah. And she was like, you know, these people were saying we need to remove these statues because... What if there's somebody that has to walk to work and they have to walk by that statue every day and be reminded of the people that hurt their ancestors and stuff, right? Right. And I was like, okay. I was like, I'm not one to throw like a blanket statement. I like to like really fine tune it because I don't think you can put blanket statements on topics like this. Okay. Because almost every, every scenario has that gray area or, you know, little holes that can poke through right yeah i was like okay so then does this person also need to not be spending money because it has people that could have hurt their ancestors on it as well okay you know and i said i think there's a clear difference between having george washington on a dollar bill and robert e lee in jesus like town hall right yeah i said because the difference is is the intent of what these people stand for. George Washington okay. didn't... George Washington lived in a time of slaves. I'm not saying he didn't have them. Right. Or that he possibly was not mean to them. I mean, he he had slaves' teeth in his mouth. That is very true. <laughs> so... But his goal in life was not to put them down. The people How who do you were, know that? I mean, his goal was, I just need to get away from England <laughs> and build <laughs> okay. up all this shit, you know? Yeah, I guess. I guess. But like to me the intent of of seeing his face on a dollar bill is much different than looking at somebody who was like a Confederacy officer, right? Because yeah, so those I... people were given an option to look at their fellow man and say, "Do you deem them as people or not? Kill your brother if you deem that they're not worth being a human." And they chose to kill their own their own people. That intent is so bad. That's pretty bad right there. Like, I can't think of one where, like, George Washington or somebody like that also had that same level of contempt for a human life intent. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So, like, at the time that they put George Washington on the bill, they weren't thinking, like, yes, a slaveholder. Let's put him on the face of the money. But at the same time, is the intent... Does the intent of his face there remain the same today? Like, could we replace him with somebody better? Can society evolve and put somebody different on the money? Like, we don't have to keep George Washington on the $1 bill. Why is he still there? He's not really relevant to today's society anymore, in my opinion. I 
you know, see a bunch of those videos. Uh, I mean, that's actually an insanely good point. Because we're, I mean, there's this whole thing about putting Harriet Tubman on the 20 in a, in a, instead of Jackson because Jackson was a fucking wild dude and really yeah. doesn't, she, she, shouldn't, she shouldn't be on money probably because he was just, he was just. He was just. He was just. <laughs> Not so, just um, as in, as in, as in right, but he was, he was just. He was something. He was a piece of work. He was just um, something. Um so yeah, they're replacing him um, with Harriet Tubman, which I think is wonderful. Uh, okay, that's supposed to be accelerated by Biden. We well, haven't see, had an update since like January, okay. but I didn't think that far ahead into it because you're right; everything evolves. Yeah, it's evolving. I'm right? down it's with that. A... Okay. I'm down with that. But I don't think you can compare the two and think they're on the same level. Like to me somebody from the confederacy in that aspect that were like you know building a shrine to them when they chose to say i don't think this race of people is worth it right like the intent it's not the intent of the statue it's the intent of the person that now we're looking at them like not the intent of having George Washington on the bill, because we only have him on the bill because we go, oh, he was the first president. Good for him. He's on the one, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's the intent of him being on it. But George Washington's right. intent as a person was not, let's make sure they stay there. Yes. So, Did he do anything to help them? Probably not. But, I mean, he didn't kill his own people to ensure they stayed there. That's what I'm saying. Okay. You know? Yeah. So... Yeah, I just think that evolution is important <laughs> in that. I think I mean, that's that's actually super great. Because the world changes. Worse. Yeah, the world changes. We could changes. do worse with putting somebody else on the dollar bill. You know, we could have, I don't know, somebody, somebody terrible. We could have, I'm trying to think of bad American people. Donald Trump. We could put Donald Trump on the one dollar bill. That I could be worse. Yeah, I don't I don't want that. <laughs> no. Um, because, but, because then the dollar bill would be orange from now on. Fucking gross. <laughs> Yeah, Straight so up I mean, monopoly money. I don't think it's fair to say that like he's not the worst person to put on the dollar bill because of course we could do worse, but like could we do better? That's the question that I think we need to ask ourselves. That's that's a fair question. And that applies to kind of the rest of this as well. So you you gave me this article um by HuffPost. It's mm-hmm. called Let's open this thing up again. So the article is about using inclusive language at work. Instead of using ableist words. So ableism is something that has come more into the forefront, I think, in the at the turn of the century, because we're starting to see so many like innovations and advancement in helping disabled bodies and also just inclusivity in general. Like everybody needs to have wheelchair ramps, you know, because some people can't go up steps. I think that's fantastic. Um So this article kind of takes it to a different level. So, Yeah, so this article is basically, instead of using ableist words, use inclusive language at work. Yes. So it's like, uh, so like here, it's like, if you say insane, psycho, lame, moronic, or crazy, you're ableist. Okay, so I, I feel... It's hard to define my feelings on this one because I can see it, you know. I okay. try not to use the word crazy or insane so much or psycho because those are like those are specific words that are used to describe like if you describe somebody's behavior as psychotic, it could be offensive to a person that has psychosis. Like somebody who has psychosis can still be on medication and have a very well-managed normal life, you know. Yeah. And to say like a killer went on a psychotic spree and he stabbed somebody in the neck, like not all people with psychosis do that. <laughs> That's true. But um, are are you saying something bad about them by saying, well, first of all, psycho is not a word that I feel like fits in a lot of stuff. I've never really said that one. I used to say it a lot. I feel. That's like a big word. To, like psycho. I don't know. That, I That's mean, a real 90s word. Crazy. Lame. Crazy and lame. Those are like and still. Ins- eh, insane. I still use the word insane. <laughs> like. If I ever like, say the word insane, it is always followed by in the membrane. Oh, my God. <laughs> Every time. Man. I I feel like, should we have prefaced this episode with, like, a language warning? We're not going to say terrible words. 
I mean, I pretty much opened it with anti-Semitism, and I was like, you yeah. know where we're going. So I'll put I'll put a I'll put a warning in the show notes also. But just yeah. if if you are if you're still here and you're offended, <laughs> I want you to know that we're not we're not we're not trying to be. I'm so sorry. So I just want to I just want to be able to talk about this in a is, free manner. It is just a topic because it's just it, a topic. I saw like 15 things all at once in relation to the same idea. Yeah. And so I just was like, all right, you know what? We need to talk about that. Yeah. So I do try to replace the word crazy or insane in my vocabulary with wild. I love that word. I use it for everything. That's wild. You know, wild's not offensive to anybody except for maybe feral children. I was about to say, like, didn't you see mama? Like you had (laughs) two of those in that movie. God. One of the most prevalent words that people are using instead of crazy these days i don't know if you've noticed the uptick in usage of the word bonkers so bonkers to me is a tv show about a cartoon cat that's a cop oh my god like that's what that means to me the word bonkers bounces off of me in such a way like i can't say it without gagging it's like the word moist to everybody else in this world that's bonkers to me i hate it so much do you every take time... it as a bad word? no it's not a bad word it's just a disgusting word like every time i hear somebody say it i'm like that's fucking gross and use a different word <laughs> like see i feel like because i tried to just say it and i was like but i went like that's bananas yeah bananas is a better word to use <laughs> yeah, it's fun <laughs> that's bananas yeah um but yeah so this this article does bring up some good points like I know that I have used the word crippled before in a way that's like crippled by anxiety and like, I'm not necessarily crippled by it. Like it's I'm, crippling anxiety is a thing, you know, like I am frozen by anxiety or I am a, yeah. c- I'm stuck with anxiety. I don't know. There's, there's just phrases that have worked their way into the vernacular of Americans s- to say that, like, I don't know, being crippled by the amount of work you have to do in th- in this article. Most of these, I don't say, yeah. Like, well, like I said, lame. I think I think lame is probably the first one. That's like probably the highest on the list for me. Yeah. Crazy. Not so much. That would be the next one. But like the other ones, not really. I don't yeah, think so I've ever one... used crippled. There's one they say in here, like, let's all walk over like that. What is that phrase? Let's all walk over to the student union together. Like that's, I guess let's go over to the student union I together. Mean, That's I a guess. little bit more inclusive of those who can't walk. But is somebody who's using a wheelchair really offended by the idea of me saying, let's walk over to well, so the that was my or something? Other thing. Most people who are disabled in that aspect, like wheelchairs and stuff, yeah. they don't want you to treat them like they are. Cause now you're separating them. Yeah. It, and like, I feel like at what point what does this article almost does with some of these phrases. It's now, making a bigger emphasis to skirt around words so that they know you're talking about them now. Yeah. And like metaphors, like it discusses in here, the words, the metaphor blind spot or falling on deaf ears. I think those are completely valid terms that like, but again, I'm questioning myself now. I'm trying to think, what am I supposed to say? The space where I can't see, like I, whenever somebody's driving in my blind spot, like what else am I supposed to call it? You know? That's Hank. No, because that's, that's my can't bad. see zone. No, because because you can't see Kelsey. The invisible Come on, zone. What's wrong with you? Ah, it's the invisible zone. <laughs> that's that's actually kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. So the invisible zone. I will use that from now on. I just I but worry. Like, falling on deaf ears <laughs> to me is is so perfect for what it is saying. It's, yeah, it's evocative. It's not saying they can't hear. It's it's like saying they choose not to. Like their ears do not pick up the wisdom you throw at them. Yeah, or like they are unable to process the words that are coming because they can't hear me. I don't know. <laughs> like yeah. the the beauty of these metaphors is that they I don't know, they just they, they exist they really for... <laughs> exemplify what it is it's trying to say. Yes. But now I'm like worried. I'm second guessing every single time I go through one of these. I'm like, is that ableist? I'm concerned now. I would love to hear from any disabled listeners if well, you see- I was reading this article and it seemed to me like there were some people that they did like kind of quotes for that yeah. found these things to not be bad, but the article is saying they're bad. Right. Yeah. And, and it, and it was coming from, from people who would find those terms ableist. And they were like, why are you talking like this? 
So yeah. I was very confused reading the article because I was like, wait, are you saying it's bad and then getting the people that it's supposed to offend to say it's good? Yeah. So and like they, they interview somebody them? they interview somebody here about the let's all walk over phrase. It says, well, I'm not walking, but it's not meant in any hostile way. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, so they're not offended. But well, they're still coming with us. Like, that is their way of walking. Yeah. That is how their mode of transportation is. Ours is walking. And that is their ver- form. Or do we just say like, hey, let's all. Ooh, let's walk and roll. Let's- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. But like, I understand the. Not gonna lie. I kind of don't. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I. I get it. But I feel like a lot of people get offended on behalf of other people. Yeah, I, that's exactly it. Let right me go there. ahead and take it upon myself to be offended for you and fight for you, which is now also a form of oppression because now you're not letting them fight their own battles. Yeah, that's, that's precisely fit the nail on the head right there. I think that is what we're kind of skirting around here is that like, I don't want to speak for somebody who is crazy. Can I say crazy around a crazy person? I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I haven't had experience with that. I don't know enough. I was going to say this. It's such an individualized basis, too, you know? Like, if I say blind spot in front of a blind person and I offend them, I would hope that they would speak up and say, like, hey, maybe you should use Invisizone from now on because it offends me because I'm blind. I would just think that they would be like, everywhere's a blind spot for me. Yeah, like, tough. Make a joke about it. Most most people that have a disability that I have known usually have that sense of humor about it because it helps them deal with it. Right. It's something that, you know, can help you get through life if you if you are disabled in some way or. Yeah, I feel so weird talking about this as an able bodied person. I feel I don't want to feel like I'm putting words in the mouths of somebody who is not, you know. Well, I mean, you know, I I have glasses. Should I be upset at the people that don't have glasses and have 2020 vision and they're, you know, they can say things like that? Like it. I don't have that. I'm not built in the way that they are. I can't yeah. be offended because there's other people that are built with things that I don't have. Right. So I'm going to hit you with this quote that I heard today. Okay. Your intention doesn't matter. The impact does. How do you feel about that? I don't like that. You don't like that? Okay. So I don't I like love that. this actually. So, I mean, you have to take into account like what you're saying. It doesn't make a difference the way you meant it, if it came across as something much worse to somebody, like if you like, so in the nineties and early two thousands, there was a big thing that like, if something was stupid or lame, you would call it gay or you you would use the R word, which I'm uncomfortable saying. I mean, I will say it first, you know, posterity, like to be like, I mean, I mean, it was a word. I guess I just, it's one that we don't use anymore and it feels bad to I say gotta it. say I haven't heard that word in a long time I know and it, there's a reason for it is because society is evolving to fit the refit the needs of its individuals you know like we don't yeah. say that anymore because it's offensive and I, I think that there are that's again with the thing of like society language these things are they changing always over time. change yeah it's a fluid thing And, uh, like, that's what I liked about it when you brought up, like, why does the dollar bill and stuff have to stay? Like, why can't it change and evolve? Right. I think that it's important for things to just change over time to fit the needs of the people that they're trying to accommodate. Like, I mean, the Constitution (laughs) was written one way and the way that they intended to write it was like the right to bear arms is a musket rifle that you have to manually reload. And it takes like 15 minutes. Yeah. Whereas now like you can fire off 60, well, 60 like rounds a second or whatever, if you get like an AK. Yeah. And that's not really written. That's not what the for- founding forefathers had in mind when they were like the right to bear arms. So sorry for you gun enthusiasts out there. <laughs> I'm anti gun, but <laughs> uh, I, yeah, the right to bear arms, just different things about the Constitution. The Constitution had the three-fifths compromise, for fuck's sake. Like, yeah. that, <laughs> the way they wrote it, the way they intended it, doesn't fucking matter anymore because it's bad. Like, the the effects of it are what matters. Yeah. 
Like, so that, that's what I was saying about the blanket stuff earlier. Like, yeah. y- you can say, this is the way to ensure everyone will be okay, but you will always have somebody that will not be. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's always going to be, like, the special cases, and maybe some people are too special of a case, but if I have to, like, modify my language to make somebody comfortable, I'm willing to do that, I Well, think. see, I take almost everything as, like, a special case. I... I I hate blanket fixes and blanket terms like that. Yeah. Because it doesn't apply to everything. Right. Like, me and Taylor have talked many times about different, like, political avenues. And, like, here's what this person's saying will be the fix. And I'm like, okay, but what about this scenario? And then it's like, well, it's like, I know. Like, there is no fix. There's no one fix for all. Yeah. Biden's going to come in and do what he can, but it will not fix every minute case of everything it will be yeah, good absolutely. for for most for many but it will not be good for all yeah because nobody can do that but he can try and that's where i take the intent part like he's he's intending to do good but his impact is always gonna be bad though <laughs> like no matter what good intent you have the impact is always going to be bad I mean, that's but, not true. That's a blanket statement right there. But it kind of is, though. Especially when you look at, at how everybody turns everything in, into being something. Like, everybody takes everything as a blanket statement. That may be part of, like, the sickness of what our society is going through right now, is that... That's what I think is maybe happening. Because we're so interconnected, anytime you say very... something, the world is, is, is hearing it the moment you're saying it and dissecting and analyzing it right then. Yeah, we're in a very, like, reactionary period right now in, in yes. history. So, and the way that stuff gets to us is so fucking fast anymore. You know, you get a TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, you get something just fed directly to your brain from somebody else's. And then, like I said, you, you hear it, and within 30 seconds, you formulated an opinion. And you're like, I don't like this thing because it said this. And maybe the person yeah. meant it in a different way, but the way it impacted you is what matters and lingers, right? So here's my thing, because I'm thinking about a topic we're going to bring up later. Okay. And and I know the person's int. See, you have to know what if their intent is valid. <laughs> yeah. So, like, it's the, important to know the intent and understand has the to intent. be valid. Yeah. I'm all big on intent. Like, what do you intend to happen with this information? Right. So it's important to understand where your conversational partner is coming from on things. You know, the, the intent yeah. has to be communicated. But like, so. Okay. Sometimes the intent is just bad. <laughs> well, yeah, and I totally agree with that. I don't think every intent is always good, but I can side some more with the impact matters, but no matter what, the impact is always just going to be there. You yeah. can't you can't avoid the impact from anything. There's impact no matter the intention. Right. Be it good or bad. There's always going to be a fallout on some side. Yeah, I mean, you can't please everybody. That's that's the thing of it. That's why exactly. we're having this conversation in the first place, you know? Exactly. So that brings me into a video that I'd seen that I wanted to get your opinions on. Okay. So I've been watching this guy on YouTube. I've talked about him on our show before. Uh, Rich at Review Tech USA. Yes. He's a very weird man sometimes. But sometimes when I get through the weirdness and he just starts talking, I usually agree with what he has to say. And I said okay. usually. Yeah. Because, um, like, you know, like everything, you can't always side with somebody. Yeah. I've never met somebody that I sided with them 100% all the time. Not even me. <laughs> Especially not you. You <laughs> Kubrick, crunchy, peanut butter eating person. So... Anyway, he did a video, which is why you bring up the wokeness. Yes. So he was talking about how Bungie uh, is is just getting too woke. Yeah. Because they have to be. So they they um, are the people that make Destiny, right? Yes. So Destiny 2 is out there. Every week you get a challenge. You can do like some weekly thing, like kill this many people, blah, 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 right? Yeah. Well, so they just did a... Uh, an event, I think like a week ago, and it was called Blood and Honor, right? Okay. Uh, does that does that ring any bells for you? Does that mean anything? Not particularly. Okay, I mean, it doesn't to me, 
either, for the most part. I mean, I don't even take it... Like, I hear Blood and Honor, and I just go like, okay. Sounds like war. I mean, kind of. That's like that's like the vibe I get. It's just like, ah, you're just talking, like, glory on the battlefield type stuff. Like, good for that, right? Yeah. Those words don't mean anything to me. Because, to me, they are just words. Yeah. Well, the community at large... I mean, jumped on them big time because apparently blood and honor was one of the slogans for the Nazi army during World War Two and stuff. Holy shit. OK, <laughs> but so are you saying that if anybody who's bad makes something their slogan now, it just has to be bad? Well, I don't think Bungie is bad for that. Maybe it's maybe it's an instance where they didn't know, you know, did they did they change it afterward is the thing. Well, I mean, the weekly thing had ended, I guess. Okay. And they were like, well, it's gone, but we didn't mean anything. Okay. So so they came out and they said, like, that wasn't our intention. They communicated their intent. Well, they didn't even give their intention. They just said, like, hey, we're sorry if this bothered you in our game. We, well, yeah, I guess they were like, we didn't mean anything. It was just, you know, the name of this event, but I guess not anymore. Okay, so they explain their intention, and then they apologize for their impact. So I'm behind Bungie on that. But, like, who is sitting there playing Destiny 2, sees that, and goes, Oh my god, these Nazi motherfuckers. I mean, maybe the granddaughter of a Holocaust survivor. But, like, you can't... A lot of people died in the Holocaust. Yes, (laughs) but but you can't avoid any combination of words that that, that has been used before. I mean, they could have used, like, guts and glory. And that probably could be bad, too, in some way. I mean, so... <laughs> we don't know every every group that's ever used a slogan for an ill intent. Yeah, okay, but think of it this way. So imagine, like, 50 years in the future, your child or grandchild, I guess, is playing a video game. And the title of a mission, they have to, like, clean up trash on beaches. And it's called Make America Great Again. Doesn't that trigger something in you? No. No, if if I no, if I in the future I'm saw not like gonna sit there and go, oh yeah, these people are still hanging on to Trump. No, I would think they are actually. Now that I'm thinking about it, I would I would think of that as like a movement. <laughs> I don't know, like that <laughs> that just strikes a chord with me. I think that um, if I were to see that in something, the words "Make America Great Again" evokes something that's so deeply ingrained in what has happened in the past few years that like like, so see look now you're saying it's 50 years in the future right yeah so it's 50 years in the future the people that are making that game probably weren't even born in the time of trump having anything to do with being the president right but you can so hang on yeah but why would you need to research the name of a of a mission that you're gonna do i mean i guess if you are do, do you need to go okay because we live in america 50 years in the future right we live in a society. And yes. it is literally covered in garbage. We're getting Wally style. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and these people are trying to make a game, teaching kids to recycle and do that stuff. And then they yeah. say, hey, we should make America great again. I think it's interesting. And they don't know, though. But we could make them know. And I think that's what happened but here with Bungie. But why do they need that... to know? Because they don't mean it. They don't even know who the man was. Yeah, but historically, it's important. Like that. Yeah, that's important to know in history. You have to as much as I did so badly in history throughout my academic career. It's important to know history and to understand the implications of things. Like if you say if you accidentally spew some rhetoric and not even trying to like the the blood and honor thing, you know, that could have really been hurtful to somebody out there. Yeah, Uh, that could have like triggered a horrible memory, like thinking about your grandma suffering in the Holocaust camps. I think that it's, it's something that the company maybe shouldn't have researched beforehand because how are you going to research every combination of every phrase that you're entering in your video game? But like, I'm, I'm glad that they apologized for it and I'm glad that they communicated their intent. It just seems like, I mean, and that was part of the point of the video that he made in regards to it. He was like, everybody, Because I'm not really big on the whole offensive thing. What do you mean? Like, everybody gets offended at the tiniest things nowadays, and it is true. But, like, can you not see and separate stuff from one another and go, well, I'm still an adult that can function 
having seen something that I don't agree with and then move on yeah. from it. I mean, I think that after after they came out and apologized for it, it's cool for the world to want to move on. But if there's somebody who's still hanging on in the background being like, no, they're but actually see, secret Nazis. I feel then, like there's going to be. I, yeah, I think that that reaction is something that doesn't need to stick around. But the initial gut reaction of this is wrong and I'm going to tell Bungie why, I think that's correct. So he goes, you know, these companies can't do all this stuff and he goes because and i mean i agree with him on that the intention of every company is to offend the least amount of people so that people will spend money with them they don't care about actually apologizing they care about making sure that you still are willing to spend your money there yeah that's fully the the intention there that's the part that bothers me about it it's like so then why go through the rigmarole because it doesn't matter they don't care that they use that phrase you don't care that they apologized (laughs) really Like, it doesn't mean anything in the grand scheme of life. Did you hear, this is something that we didn't put in our show notes to start over with, but did you hear about Coke, their little scandal this week? I did not. Okay, so let me look this up before I go spout and stuff. Um, So Coca-Cola is facing some backlash because they had, like, an internal training material that encourages their staff to, quote-unquote, try to be less white. I'm like, what okay. does that mean? <laughs> They're like embroiled in this right now. So Coke is kind of oh my under God. fire because the online racism training, um, the slides included tips to learners on how to be less white, less arrogant, less certain, less defensive, less ignorant, and more humble. So I guess they're saying like, don't be so, don't be Karens. Like I'm trying to figure out. Well, like, where... I, I just think it's funny that white was tied to arrogant <laughs> And no. all the other stuff, you know, it was like, be, yeah, be less white. And then picked, picked these words to say, these are the white things. Yeah. So you know? like, what do you want me to be Coke if I'm working for you? <laughs> well, I don't know. That's guess... kind of what he said in his video too. All companies want everybody to basically just be a robot and say the minimum of nothing to ensure that everybody just is happy yeah and that's ridiculous though i mean to a point it is i think i really think it's so important that we try to be more inclusive in our language as a society just like i know that there is a big thing about like oh triggered and like everyone's so triggered all these snowflakes but like trigger words are an actual thing you know it it's not something to be joked about or toyed with it's something that's an actual like trauma responses are triggered within people based on certain words and if your word is avocado i'm so sorry maybe don't go to the grocery store (laughs) but if your word is like like rape or something and you don't expect to encounter that word in a daily situation but you go into a video game match perhaps and you're like oh we're raping the other team like holy shit don't say that yeah that's don't do that (laughs) well that's messed up yeah i mean that's like just normal people talking but i feel like if you're going to go into, like, an R-rated movie, you can't just, you know, expect to not hear some wild shit. You know what I'm saying? Well, but, like, it, it, in an online match like that, there yeah. there is no filter. You have no idea what's going to fucking happen. There is right. no expectation. And to say that, like, someone who's triggered by that word or that situation coming up, like, to say that they shouldn't play video games, I think that's shitty. I think that society should have to conform to victims of sexual violence and say like we're not going to use that word to just casually mean like you know crushing the other team (laughs) yeah i have never heard that in that respect that is ridiculous that's because you're a man (laughs) i play too much online overwatch and have been in team chat before well or i also play completely quiet like i don't join like chats with people ever yeah i don't before i found like my overwatch squad i would get in team chat and i was no. essentially not allowed to speak because having a womanly voice and you yeah. speak in game chat, you just instantly get like pounced upon and it's not, it's not a good experience. No, so, I, the last time I was probably in a team chat was in like the PlayStation three and I hated yeah. it then. And I was like, if I could ever find a way to never hear another person online, I will do that <laughs> because I don't care what any of those people have to say. Cause none of them are real to me. You know? Yeah. 
And most of them's sole purpose is strictly to trigger you. Yeah, being a woman These online people only is not want fun. to cause you the pain. Yeah. Which is ridiculous. It is. And it's the fact that they know that that word is offensive and not just that word. It's just, it, this, this can be applied to a broader sect of society. Like there are words that people know are offensive and, and they'll yeah. just say them out of nowhere and be like, Oh, what are you mad about it? Like, see, that, that's it's antagonistic. That's a thing that I like about, uh, blizzard for overwatch. Okay. Um, you know, I don't really join the chat, but in Overwatch, on the computer, you can still, like, type stuff on the screen, right? Yeah. Um, I've reported infinite number of people. Oh, so many people. <laughs> for that shit. Yeah. Not because I'm even offended. You just shouldn't get to enjoy this game. You should not, because that that falls into your intent and impact. Yes. Your intent is to have a negative impact. Right. That's and precisely that it. shit is ridiculous. Yeah. What were we talking about before we entered this? <laughs> uh, the the blood and honor stuff. Right. So. Like, I'm not going to get too much into his other points. Because I feel like the one that I'm more talking about is that part of the video. Yeah. Because the other part, it's like, okay, but that's just, that just gets into the whole, like, snowflake territory stuff. Yeah. You know, which I just feel like because we're so connected, everybody cares what everybody else is doing. Yeah. And wants them to conform to what I want everyone else to be like, you know? And like to an if, extent, it almost feels like they're waiting for someone to slip up so they could, like, blow the air horn and be like, fucking get them, you know? That's that's my problem. It's not that I care if we evolve and we clean stuff up. Like, I don't care about that. But the fact is there, there, there are people who solely are trying to find you for everything. Yeah. That's what I don't understand. We have that much time on our hands to just do that. I don't have time to do that, and then I don't want to do that. I just want to live my life and do my stuff. Yeah. But then there are other people that want to solely look at what everyone else is doing and then call them out on it. Right. But they probably don't make the changes on their own side. They're just getting everybody else in trouble. Stirring the pot, you know? Stirring the pot, that's, that's the big thing. I just don't like people that stir the pot. I think yeah. I think that comes down to the end of this. Like, why are you trying to stir the pot about a fictional vampire? <laughs> why are you trying to stir the pot? Like, blowing up that guy's TikTok video about saying how everything he said was anti-Semitic when he didn't probably finish the video, you know? Right. Yeah, there's, there's definitely, like, situations in which you can tell the person kind of stepped into a wasp's nest and didn't intend for it. Yeah. But it's, I mean, if your intention doesn't matter, the impact does It all. I think it really boils down to that, you know? So I want to close that with one more thing though. Okay. This was a TikTok that really bothered me and Taylor. It bothered me for a different reason. Okay. Kind of just because this guy is that stupid, but also because... I think I've talked about this on the show before. You know that our education system is trying to ensure that we're stupid. Yeah. <laughs> like, school is not about actually learning now. It's about keeping you just under so that you can't ever affect the status quo when you get out. It's, yeah, it's teaching to a test so that you get through the class and not actually giving you any life skills to move forward after you leave high school. Yeah. And so you were an AP student, right? Oh, yeah. I was AP in, I think, math. That was about it. Okay. I didn't care. Well, in English, but not any of the other crap. I saw a TikTok that I, that, that, that I sent you, and I wanted your opinion on this because I found it yeah. so ridiculous. It's pretty rough. That this guy could be a teacher. So it's a teacher who is teaching his students that slaves were never whipped when they were <laughs> slaves. Which is incredible because there is, like, evidence that it happened. Like, and then he gets mad at a student who goes, like, are you serious? And he's like, we are in AP. That's what we're here for. Let's have an honest conversation. Yeah. And then he proceeds to... 
to try to define the N-word. Yeah, in a way that doesn't make any sense. I have n- never heard the N-word for what he said it meant. He said no. it, it, its sole root, root intent was uh, an ignorant person. Yeah, to describe a person who is ignorant, and that is not the intention of that word so, by any means. I'm just going to say N-word, and everybody who heard me say that had an idea of what it meant, and I bet none yeah. of them thought that. No. So I'm probably going to, well, not jail. I can't go jail for it, but I'm probably <laughs> on a watch list because I just Googled earlier what that word meant. Yeah. Flat out, what does this word mean? And trying to look up the, like, root of where it came from and everything <laughs> like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. I tried to figure out where it came from to see if this guy had any kind of stretch substance to that statement. Like, is there some little tiny ion of truth somewhere in this stupid ass statement that he's making? Literally none. Yeah, it, none. it means the one thing and yeah, only ever one. has. And he's trying to teach AP students that that is incorrect. And I guarantee, listening to him, he is a white person. And he is trying to soften the blow of what has been happening to black people over time. So he's trying to, like, get the next generation to not think that it was ever that bad, you know? Yeah. And that's so, like, I worry sometimes for our public school curriculum. Like... Like, is that what the kids are learning, honestly? I think that's why some of the stuff bothers me. Like, when we cut out parts of things. I'm not saying you should just be able to say it. But I don't no. like it when people pretend it was never there. Yeah. Because, like we've said, it's history. So, like you said, make America great again. Uh-huh. I think that we should know what it meant, but I don't think we should never be able to use it and change its meaning. Yeah. I know what it meant, but I'm not going to make it mean that forever is kind of my thing with it, you know? Yeah. Now, there are some words, such as the word we're talking about, I don't know that you can change it. No, there's nothing that you can do with that word that's going to change the meaning of it over time. And I think, nothing. I think that's what people are trying to do, and they're trying to make it like it's okay. But how are you going to make it okay and still call it the N-word? I know, you can't even <laughs> say it. <laughs> like, you can't say it, yet you want to teach that it doesn't mean anything bad. Yeah. That that blows my mind. That blows my mind. Yeah. It's like it's like trying to take back the F word, not, not fuck, the other F word <laughs> that I don't want to say. Oh, um, British cigarette. It, yeah, one of those. Okay. Like, I, I don't think there's just some words that like you can't just throw them around. And I think that we as a society as a society can agree to just evolve off of that word. (laughs) I don't don't know. We have like 10 words that mean one thing. We should have (laughs) one word. Yeah. You know what I mean? But we make like one good one and then nine bad ones. (laughs) Yeah. It's just not, it's not a good, it's not a good method. That's just like kind of what we do, you know? Yeah. I, you know that I like to put myself in the situations of uncomfortableness. I know you do. My skin is crawling, by the way, this whole episode. It's just... I know. I just, I just never want to forget the world as a whole. I don't want to make a perfect bubble where we forget that there are bad things out there. Yeah. Because, I mean, how many... People always get so upset at me when I go, like, how many movies where we see that? Like, well, that's a movie, but it's... It's to get you thinking about what if that were to happen. There's so many movies where you create this like isolated bubble of perfectness and try to forget that there are people that are never going to agree to that, that live outside that bubble causing all the chaos. And if your bubble were to ever burst, you need to be ready to deal with that chaos. You need to know about it. A level of preparedness, I guess. Like you should be prepared. That doesn't mean you have to participate But just know. And I think that's part of this problem. People don't... People just see it and immediately shoo it away. Just shun it. Like, I don't know. No, I I don't even want to know there's something bad out there. That's what bothers me. I'm I'm not bothered by someone being like, that word shouldn't be used. But don't make it go away. Make it known that it is 
over here and it means this, you know? Right. Yeah. Like have the word, have the parameters around the word, know not to use the word. Yeah. I mean, if there's, you know, no other, no other way that it can be used and it can only be that, then maybe it should go away. But, you know, whatever. Yeah. See, we didn't fight that bad. Not that bad. No, we didn't fight Um, that bad. I just want to say to our listeners, like, if there's anything in this episode that we said that we stepped out of line or we offended you in any way, please write in, let us know. I want you to know that my intent behind my words, because we talked about it, intent does matter. Our intention is not to hurt anybody out there. We are curious. And if our impact has come across in a way that is damaging to you, I'm so, so deeply sorry. Like from the bottom of my heart, please reach out so I can give you a personal apology if something has rubbed you the wrong way or if there's something that we need to know going in the future. I definitely like to know both sides and I can, yeah. I can play both sides. I never give one side of an argument without thinking of the other. You like to devil's advocate. I mean, I, well, you have to be able to understand both sides. Yeah. Like I said, there's no blanket. Like, like with the, with the confederacy, with the vampire, the stupid vampire thing. Fuck. <laughs> Let's all come back to the stupid vampire. Well, that's what started it. Yeah. I understand that the confederacy was the wrong side, right? Yeah, for sure. That's the, that's, that's the argument side of it that I get from that side. But the other side... What was a person... He was not a vampire at the time. Is he just supposed to pack up and try to move away and possibly die on his own with probably no money in the 1800s? I love how heated you are about this fictional vampire. Or do you stay... Well, I, I'm like trying to put myself in those shoes. Like, how can I say everybody who was there was strictly bad? Yeah. I'm pretty sure I used the same argument uh, during the Black Lives Matter thing. I understand that the institution of police is flawed. Yes. But every cop is not flawed. There is one good egg in there somewhere, and by God, we're going to find him. There probably has to be. And I understand <laughs> that a system prevents him from from fl- from flourishing. Or her. Yeah. Like, I understand the overall is bad, but I can't condemn every single person. Yeah. I condemn the system. Yes. Same with, you know, all these words and all this other stuff. Like, I condemn the bad systems, but we got to find the good that's inside. Yeah. I'm always trying to find the good inside. Got to look for that little good nugget at the bottom of this horrible barrel. Um, So, I I think this is probably one of our most controversial ones. Probably. um, Yeah. I just, I'm, I really, I want to know what you guys think out there. Please, if, if you have any big thoughts on this, we are so open to you emailing us or writing us on Twitter or even on Instagram. 100%. Uh, just anywhere you can find us. We are all over the place. We want to know your thoughts, your opinions. Uh, how woke is too woke for you? Do you think that ever wants Snowflake and that we should just be able to say what we want when we want? Or do you fall somewhere in the middle? <laughs> so... Definitely let us know your thoughts. We will tag. I don't have anything for the Twilight thing, but we have the uh, YouTube video, the Ableist article, and those uh, myriad of TikToks. There's four in total. Yeah, we'll link them all for you. Uh, Let me know what you guys think. And then uh, let me know how mad you are at Kelsey or me. Probably more so me, I'm going to (laughs) guess. I don't know. I'm curious. Well... Are you ready to uh, tear down this Confederate statue? <laughs> I was gonna say, are you ready to change this dollar bill? Ready to uh, ready to evolve this nation? Yes, please. Now I know that when I say this part, sometimes you guys think I'm not talking to you, but I'm talking to you, right there with your big headphones on, and also you with those little earbuds, and you who's listening on your cell phone. Please tell your friends about us. Help us grow this audience. Don't forget to subscribe to us on your most favorite platform so you never, ever miss a darn episode because we are here each and every Monday. That is a promise, a guarantee that Yimtope is made to you. And if you have a second to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, that really, really helps us out so, so much. And don't forget to find us and friend us on social media. We are YMBTOAP on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Uh, we just streamed Call... 
Call of the Sea? Call of the Sea. Call of the Sea. Call of the Sea. Uh, That was our big game stream for the month. Uh, We hope you guys enjoyed it. Yes. Glad that we got everything to be good for you guys. If you missed it on Twitch, it is up on YouTube now and you can see it there. If yes. you got questions or not questions, if you have uh, suggestions for what you want to see in March for a game stream, let us know, please. So we try to do a little shorter games so we can give you guys like a full experience all in one go. Yes. Try not to do like Assassin's Creed and have a 500 hour game get split up for 10 months, you know. But Just hey, like if you want to see that, let us know. I mean, we can. I don't know if Kelsey would like that too much. Assassin's Creed, probably not, but I was going to say. Uh, and also don't forget, we are on Patreon. If you like what we do, you want to keep us doing it, you want to help support us just a little bit, you sure can. You can support us for as little as $2 a month, gain access to our secret Discord community, where if you would like to tell us what you thought about today's episode, you can get your feedback to us instantly. You say it right there. We're right there. We know about it right then. You can write to us as you're listening. Just you like, sure boom, can. fire it off. And you will also get our secret snippets of our ramblings before the show where we talk about, like in this case, <laughs> uh, things to, to unjangle our nerves for the very sensitive topics we were trying to delve into. <laughs> and uh, if you like the Discord, you like that, but you want just like, just, just like a little more. You're like, you know what? I like that. But I want just like a little bit more of that Yimto. You can upgrade to a $5 a month plan where you still get the Discord, you still get the ramblings, but we also do a Patreon-exclusive YouTube review every month. We will review a couple movies, maybe a game, talk about a TV show. We take suggestions from you guys, experience something that either I really love and I want to get Kelsey's opinion, Kelsey loves it, wants my opinion, or something both of us have never seen. And you get to see us react to it live. Maybe it's something that you guys wanted us to do. And you want to know what we think. And so we do that for you guys on YouTube once a month. We just did Vivarium and Mother was our one last month. It was absolutely bananas. Very wild set of movies. But uh, it was also super fun. I loved Kelsey's reaction and how we both took (laughs) both of these movies entirely different. And that was actually like our longest review to date. And I still had more to say at the end of it. I was like, we have to end it probably because we went over two hours, but I still had thoughts. I know. Uh, Yeah. We uh, continued that on the discord for a while. So yeah. But also if you know, you can't do that and you want to get to us the old fashioned way, send us an email. We got one of those too. YMBTOAP at gmail.com. Give us that listener mail. Give us some topics. Give us some feedback. Give us some suggestions of things you want us to go deep on. Like, we went deep on this. It's been a while since we took a topic and truly delved into it. So give us another one of those. We love it when you guys say, hey, here's something. Might be a little iffy, but just get into it. Get into the meat and potatoes right there. Go deep. Get wet. And don't forget, our theme song is The Grim Reaper Blows the Horn by Farage. Please check him out on YouTube. He's got so many good things. I want you guys to really go check him out. Like, honestly, his music, so danceable. I put it on when I'm in a bad mood and I'm just rocking out. And as always, thank you guys so much for listening. And tune in next time to get the answer to that burning question. How woke is too woke? One more important sound we wanted you to hear. Are you looking for a podcast about getting down with the shrimp sickness? (laughs) Uh, It was so funny. (laughs) I couldn't handle it. I was like, I was like, I was like, it's good, and then it sank in. Uh, All right, okay. Do you want another takery? Oh no, no. This this just might be the ender. I'm I'm crying. Hang on. Okay, you ready? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's stupid. Uh, okay, you ready? You ready? Ready. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. Hang on. I'm I'm legit crying. I have a tear in my eye. Hang on. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna do the next part. I'm gonna do the next part. Okay. Okay. Take a breath. <laughs> okay. 
then you must be thinking of another podcast. <laughs> Ooh, whoa, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> serious face now. <sighs> oh, Christ.